Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin will break out this year, says DeVere, CEO. And this is yet another example of a large institution stating the obvious, that Bitcoin is going to be huge. Now, having said it this year, makes it very interesting. We're going to take a look at all the different institutions that have said what they have said and where this all might potentially lead sooner rather than later. Also, Ripple partner Flare says 295 million XRP sent to claim the Spark token and massive response from crypto investors. We're going to take a look at this and I'm going to show you a tutorial, a step-by-step -step process, how to use the Nano Ledger S to claim your Spark tokens. And we'll round out the day with Q of the day and we'll do that at the very end. But first, let's jump into the market. So today, September 1st, it's about 9 a.m. Texas time, getting things done early. Thank God. So uh, I got to tell you, it is way easier easier to make these videos when the market is up because everybody's usually they have a natural exuberance they're really happy and they're, you know, they just want to see what's going on and uh, there's not too many negative comments it's amazing so these are the days I live for so Bitcoin is up 1% almost touching that 12,000 spot I think it can do it this week but time will tell Ethereum up big time bigly 469 I think is going to touch 500 by the end of the week we're up 8% and 15% for the seven day average and then tether and xrp are two stable coins what are you going to do xrp watch out chain link about the same $16 up uh, for the weeks 5.2% looking pretty good and polka dot I got to tell you I think it can reach $7 but we will see it's up 44% massively for a seven day average not too shabby Cash, Litecoin, Litecoin up 1.7, great. 5.4 for Cardano, SV up 1.1. Crypto.com, 0.6, nothing really big. Tron up big time. And uh, I know they just did a partnership with Band, so we'll see how that all works out, but looking pretty good. Stellar 2.2, Monero, which Monero don't really have too much faith in. Looks like they're trying to get rid of all the privacy coins. We'll see how that works out. NEM up 21%. Congratulations all your NEM holders. And UMA, the one that I totally got wrong in Alex Mascioli's uh, uh, video, I got to tell you, UMA is doing massive, but I think it all has to do with DeFi and Sushi Swap, which I definitely need to do a video on sooner rather than later. And uh, that's really the big stuff moving forward. 26% for Ampleforth. Again, DeFi looking good. All right, well, let's jump into today's top story. So first up, Bitcoin will break out this year, says DeVere, CEO. And uh, I'm always looking for big institutions that are talking positively about Bitcoin. And I know it's not the uh, most exciting technology. It is, uh, you know, 10 plus years old now. But uh, from what I've been talking to, from what I've heard about, Bitcoin will still pop because it is on the minds of every big institutional investor. Now, all the different things that are going on with DeFi, that is the new generation, I think. Now, can that actually sustain? <laughs> I personally don't think so, but only time will tell. Anyhow, what's going on here? So DeVere Group CEO Nigel Green predicted last week that the U.S. presidential election and a weak dollar will drive the price of Bitcoin for the rest of 2020. I think it's that, those two factors, plus quantitative easing, which is going to lead to Bitcoin being massively pumped. Following the Federal Reserve's policy shift on inflation, in case you don't know, the Fed wants to massively, not massively, but it wants to let it run hot as far as inflation above 2%. And of course, when we see inflation, uh, that means a opportunity for Bitcoin to start to rise up. And of course, where Bitcoin goes, so does the rest of the cryptocurrency market. He also warned about investing in the stock market, which I think is interesting because that is what the VAR is all about, stock markets and pensions and things like that. The Vera Group, established by Green in 20, 2002, describes itself as one of the world's leading independent financial advisory organizations. More than 10 billion assets under management or under advice from 80,000 clients in 100 countries. And I had to take a look at the website to see what this place is all about. And it, it's just, you know, the basics, the you know, basic website. But what I found interesting well, under products and services, it talks about here, international pension planning. If you know anything about pensions, there is a real problem with them across the United States, actually across globally. And I've always said, if pensions get in the game, watch out, because that is a huge amount of capital to come into the cryptocurrency digital asset market. So I'm hoping these guys will be on the forefront of going, hey, you know what? Let's try to push, you know, one to 5% into this asset class, which is the best performing asset class of the decade. Just saying. All right. So scrolling down. They talk again about U.S. presidential election. Always there's uncertainty, but I got to tell you, this one is going to be the most uncertain. I believe, personally, if Joe Biden gets elected, 
and he becomes the president, you will see the stock market drop because Donald Trump has done great things for the stock market and all his of his friends. Let's be honest; he's got a lot of he knows a lot of rich people, and uh, with the tax cuts, he's done uh, big things, and that has pushed up the market. Now, I'm not here to debate anything as far as like. Uh, the politics of it, I do not care. All I care about is where is the price going to go. And if you see Trump get reelected, who knows, then I think that the stock market will uh, push a little bit. I don't think it can, it can continue this nonsense, especially with the Fed going, hey, we're going to let inflation run a little bit hot. But if you see Biden come in there, it's going to tank a little bit. Is that a bad thing? Not so much for us. It doesn't really matter for us because it's all good. All this uncertainty is good for us, cryptocurrency digital assets, because it allows people to go, you know what? That economic policy that we have here in the, in the United States, which is actually causing problems throughout the globe, is screwing things up. So where can we go to uh, a safe haven asset that has no boundaries, is not influenced by any government, and has an economic hardening of its financial backing? Well, guess what? You can't print Bitcoin, so let's go with that. And then, of course, they get in, then the floodgates open and cryptocurrency are assets. That's just my thesis. Anyhow, so you have the presidential election, you have the coronavirus and quantitative easing. And, of course, he says here, as uncertainty heightens, investors will pile into safe haven assets. In particular, those not tied to any specific country, such as Bitcoin and gold. And I have to agree. I think the new uh, savings account is gold, silver, Bitcoin, but just an opinion. Decentralized, I've never heard this before, non-sovereign. I mean, I've heard the, the phrase, but I never heard non-sovereign with cryptocurrency digital assets. I'm going to start using that. Decentralized non-sovereign, meaning not having to do with any type of country. Secure digital currencies, including Bitcoin, will become more attractive to investors as they will offer a hedge against turbulence in traditional markets. And this is the same thing that uh, Shamath, Peli Hippotaya, was talking about. He calls it schmuck insurance. And that's why we should get Bitcoin, because it could pay off massively when all the economic policies start to fall around us. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen, even if it doesn't collapse. I don't think that the dollar is going to totally wipe out you know, for the uh, reserve currency of the world. But I do see a lot of turbulent times ahead. And when there's turbulence and uncertainty, where can you go? Safe haven assets. Anyhow, the DeVere Group CEO added printing of historic sums of helicopter money that's pushing the financial system has devalued the dollar and prompted it inflation fears, emphasizing you can't print Bitcoin. And of course, I just kind of stole that from him. But uh, it totally makes sense. So I'm going to add these guys, DeVere, to my institutional investors uh, when I talk about everything else. So some of the people who are in the space, Fidelity with their 8 trillion assets under management. You've also got Amer Ameritrade with 1 trillion assets under management. And you got the gold bugs, Van Eck with 49 billion AUM. And uh, these guys were heavy into gold and they say, you know what? As good as gold is, uh, Bitcoin's even better. And they lay out the whole case. Paul Tudor Jones, 21 billion assets under management. And he put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. This was on May 8th. And he is apparently a legend on the stock market. So when people take a look at, well, Paul Tudor Jones is doing it. I'm going to do it. And then off they go. And of course, Grayscale, with the, who are massively buying up Bitcoin in droves. I think they, they purchased like 75% of all Bitcoin in the last couple of months. And then lastly, MicroStrategy just came out and said, hey, we're buying 21,000 Bitcoin. And this was uh, this month. Or actually, I guess last, last month because it was September 1st. So they own 0.1% of all Bitcoin. And the CEO stated, hey, Bitcoin's digital gold, harder, stronger, faster, and smarter than any money that has preceded it. And these guys, if you don't know, uh, they just deal with computer analytics and data processing. So uh, I, my theory is that they probably took a look at all the different analytics that they have and data and said, you know what? It was really going to be good and really going to happen pretty fast. Bitcoin, let's get into that. And they bought a ton of it. All right, so that's it for that section. Let's move on. Next up, this is all about XRP. So if you are an XRP holder or are thinking about it, uh, stick around. If you're not, go ahead and fast forward to the next section that talks about the queue of the day. So what's happening here? Well, Flare uh, Network is a new Turing Complete smart contract platform. All the, all we're doing here is you're, we're going to try to get the Spark token, which is the Flare native token. And it's like an airdrop, which you're going to get a utility fork of XRP. So we're going to set this up so you can get your Spark tokens easily and simply by using a Ledger Nano S or X. That's all we're going to do right now. So this all comes from uh, White's Wind. I think I said his name right. But White's Wind, he's one of those lead programmers for XRP Labs, and he put out a tool uh, to help you get your Spark tokens. So pretty simple. Um, to make it super simple, actually, there is a nice little graphic 
that was made by Stethis Crypto. And let's just blow it up real quick. So here's what you need. So you need a Ledger Nano S or X. You can also use Zoom or XUMM if you want to, but uh, Ledger Nano X, S and X is pretty, pretty simple. If you don't have that, you can use the XUMM. So you need a non-custodial Ethereum address, meaning you can't use Coinbase or any type of uh, exchange. It, it must be like my Ether wallet, uh, Mu, MetaMask, uh, Nano S, something like that. We're going to need the XRP toolkit, which is xrptoolkit.com to connect your Ledger wallet and the full guide for XRP holders, which is the one we just took a look at. So very first thing, we're just, I'm going to go do an overview here of this nice little graphic. Then we'll go over to whites.com to take a look at what we got to do. So we're going to go through the warnings disclaimers. We're going to click continue. Here's the options. We're going to choose 2B. Don't use XUMM. I don't know. How to, I think it's Zoom. X -zum, I don't know. And... Uh, we're going to use an NL address. If you don't have one of those, then you're going to use the XUMM. You're going to generate an ETH compatible account, which is pretty simple if you don't have it. You're going to provide an ETH compatible uh, account address, which is right here. We're going to stick it in. Then you're going to, you're going to connect your Ledger Nano to, an, to the XRP toolkit. And we'll go over all that in a second and paste the message field and so on and so forth. So let's do the very first thing it says, visit flare.whites.com. Okay, before we get started, there's something very important you need to know, and that is that if you need a firmware update, which looks like this in your for your Nano Ledger under Ledger Live, then you must update your firmware first. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to do that, there's going to be a little card that's going to swipe right about now, and you can click on that and watch it. It's about seven or eight minutes, and it'll help you walk you through. But you must do this first if you have this little option where it says update firmware. So do that first before you move on. You need. So again, one, disclaimers, warnings, and acknowledgments. I am responsible. Tools right on a voluntary basis. Tools right on a voluntary. Sure, I agree. Yes, I do all that stuff. Read it all. Fantastic. I'm going to click continue. So we can click on 2A or 2B. Again, if you don't have uh, a Ledger Nano, you're going to click on 2A and continue. But we have one, so we're not going to use XUMM. We're going to click continue. So number three, generate ETH compatible account. So if you have a Nano Ledger, you should have an ETH compatible account. It's going to look something like this, 0x415, blah, 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 blah. So just to make sure, if you want to go to your Nano Ledger, you can go to portfolio or you can go to accounts. It doesn't really matter. But uh, so here's Ethereum. And you can tell, here's my legacy account. I'm going to click on that. And up here, let me move this down. Send, receive, buy Ethereum. If you just want to find the actual address, uh, just click on receive. And it's Ethereum on legacy. Yeah. It's going to have you take a look at your actual nano ledger. And that's the address, 0x. That's mine. So if you want to send me a bunch of Ethereum, go right ahead. Anyhow, we're going to click on copy this address copied just to make sure that we have it. So we do have it. We're going to skip this step. I own an ETH compatible account and I own the secret because it's in a nano ledger. And it's going to say, okay, now provide it. Now prove it. All right. Command V. And it says right here, please never use a ETH compatible address generated for you by an exchange. Got it. Next. Now, number five, confirm account ownership on the XRP ledger your eth compatible address will now have to be stored in the message key field on the xrp ledger on your account this way flare networks can determine the account on the flare ledger is owned by you this way the token distribution contract knows which xrp ledger accounts contain the balance to read for spark token distribution and it says here you didn't use xumm so please follow the instructions below to use xrptoolkit.com for legend devices to store your eth compatible address in the required field on the xp layer blah, blah blah great so it's going to say open xrp toolkit nice fantastic little link and connect your wallet so we're going to open link in a new tab and here it is and it says connect your connect to a ledger sure we'll click on that and it says plug in device and open the xrp app which it is plugged in but now i need to go to xrp so i'll go back to my Anna ledger scrolling over to xrp hit the buttons, and it says retrieving account information. And that's me, XRP 6169. So just so you know, like I have multiple nano ledgers. I have a couple S's, a couple X's, and uh, I'm going to have to do this for each single one because in this one, it has 6,000 uh, XRP. So uh, that's just one of them. So we'll do that. We'll confirm. So here we are on the XRPtoolkit.com. There is our address. It says we have 6,169, which is the exact amount that I have on my on this ledger. And are we done? No, there's a couple more steps to do. So we're going to go back here. It says in the men, so open expert tool toolkit and connect your wallet. Done. In the menu bar, go to account and select the properties menu item. So here's account properties. Look at the account properties page for the message key section. 
which here is the message key section. And it states, paste the value displayed below in the message key field and click the update button. So I'm gonna copy this, come over here, stick that in the message key. I'm gonna click the update. And then we're gonna actually take a look at our nano ledger. And it's gonna say transaction type account setting. I'm gonna scroll over account one of three, RHZ, blah, 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 blah. Scroll, that says account one of three. Scroll over account two of three, account three of three. Here's the fee, XRP. 0.00012. I'm okay with that. Message key, one of five, two of five, three of five, four of five. I'm just going to scroll through. And then the last thing you're going to see is going to say sign transaction with a check mark. We're going to click both buttons if you got a S or X, whichever one they are. Or if you keep going, it'll say reject. So we're going to accept it. We're signing it, submitting the transaction. Please wait. And we're all set. And that is all there is to it, my friends. Now we're going to go back here. We're going to click on next. And that's pretty much it. So you just got to wait until probably December when it starts to do that drop. And what I have to do is I have to go back and do this for all my other nano ledgers because I have them on different ones. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Let's jump into Q of the day. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the office. So for our Q&A, we've got Brad Cam, and he is the co-founder of Unstoppable Domain. So the question always is um, for differences with subscribers are two questions. One is, Rob, what should I invest in? And for that, I have no idea because I'm not a financial advisor. And the second thing is, is as far as like crypto domains for unstoppable domains, what type of industries or what type of domains should I get into? Again, I don't have that type of information, but my man here does because he sees all the data and all the information that we are not privy to. So Brad, thanks for coming in and doing this quick Q&A of the day. Thanks a bunch for having me. Sure. And yeah, you know, I mean, I think we, we get this question a lot and, you know, I don't know that we're experts either. I think this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a new industry. So I think that the thing that everyone's trying to figure out right now is what are going to be the similarities between the traditional domain industry uh, and the blockchain domain industry? And then what are going to be the differences? And, you know, I was, I think I was maybe started buying domains in like 1998 myself, dot com domains. So I kind of went through this, you know, cycle. I bought a couple of good ones, but not too many. I, I don't think I was amazing at it or anything. Um, but the things that I think everybody was really into at the time were like, uh, so there was, you know, gambling related stuff. There was sports related stuff. I think my only successful sale ever was fantasy football, F-U-T-B-O-L, um, dot com. Yeah. And then I think that, uh, so those were the things that I think, oh, and also, you know, marijuana related terms and stuff like that, that, you know, wound up being, wound up being pretty important. Uh, and I think the reason why they wound up being important was for sort of a, a strange reason, because a lot of the uh, ad platforms wouldn't let you buy ads around uh, weed terms. And so if you had this domain, it was like the only way for people to find it. So people were actually typing it in to the search, sorry, typing it into the web address bar instead of just into the search bar. So that was kind of a quirk of history that made uh, that made marijuana related terms uh, pretty interesting. I remember uh, back in those days. I do remember. Yeah. Uh, so you know, just from what we're seeing, you know, with you know, folks on the blockchain domain side, uh, people are people are interested in a lot of crypto related terms. I think that's. You know, anything that is any in any way associated with crypto or crypto meme is probably where uh, a lot of the focus is going. I think people are also, you know, going after, you know, traditional industries like travel and healthcare and uh, finance and other stuff like that. Um, so we're seeing that stuff. We're seeing crypto stuff. I think the one other area that maybe is like a little uh, unique about blockchain domains that doesn't probably happen quite as much in the traditional world is that these can also be, you know, domains for your personal website or for people to pay you personally. So names uh, and things like that are a little bit more relevant in this world than they are in the old world. So that's another thing that we're seeing is people trying to get their names, whereas like in traditional world, having your, your name as your domain name, maybe that matters, but maybe you care a little bit more about your email address. Maybe you care a little bit more about um, something else. So... Yeah, makes sense. I think I, for us, when, when I try to describe it, like why people would do it, there's, there's always a couple of reasons. First of all, your name, because you can get paid in cryptocurrency, right? So Bitcoin, Ethereum, every other type of cryptocurrency that you want to, wouldn't that be great if you could just have your name, joeblow.crypto, and just goes right there. So it's like super simple instead of those long hash graphs. Fantastic. And then, of course, I saw that sex.crypto just sold a couple of days ago for, I think it was $90,000. 
So not that that is like the, the uh, typical type of uh, what's going to actually happen, but I can see as, as, as you were saying it, names, I, I can understand the uh, industries, you know, crypto and things like that. But if we look like I was thinking like five, 10 years down the road, what are these, these um, regular industries that we see right now, especially like with, with finance and banks and then branching off into like, like pharmaceuticals and healthcare? And just the just the, the regular actual business names where they could put dot crypto or dot zill, how much would that be worth, you know, going further? Like these are the types of, I think, plays that are like way down the line. But I think they could be huge, just like with your uh, fantasy football and marijuana. Imagine if you get like like a marijuana type of website back in the 90s and what it actually is for today, as far as like the states that can actually actually legalize it. It'd be huge. It'd be, uh, you know, a watershed moment. But. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I think the one thing I would keep in mind is is that that you know for you know for your listeners out there is is that you know one of the things the thing that's super important for domain names is making them useful. Like so, you know, you have a way to get traffic, and once you figure out a way to get traffic, that's really what you know that's really what's going to make your your domain name important. And I think one of the reasons why people are thinking about industries like porn industry, like marijuana industry and others is because those are, you know, legal activities, at least you know, legal activities in the U S uh, that have issues with the current tools. So you know, those types of places, when the current internet really isn't quite working for you, uh, even though you're not doing anything wrong, that's a great place for, I think, crypto in general to step in um, crypto payments to step in blockchain domains to step in, uh, those, of course, aren't the only industries that are that are that are relevant. Um, but those are those are things that other people have been throwing out there as as potentials. Um, and again, this is not our prediction. Uh, we do not make predictions about what's going to be the best domain name. I don't think that we're the experts at that. Uh, we're technology builders. So we're trying to build a revolutionary new domain registry. How the ecosystem rolls out over the course of the next twenty years, I think there's probably, uh, there might be better people to predict exactly how that's going to go. We're just watching and uh, observing and seeing these kind of early trends, but it's it's really it's really early. And you know, the other thing that's you know happening on the ground right now are DeFi apps, uh, people actually launching you know DApps on on uh, on uh, blockchain domains, and so that's another category. So I know I already talked about finance, um, but just just to kind of make it real for everybody, the stuff that people are actually doing today, which I think should be, you know, kind of, if you're trying to think about how to, you know, how to focus, um, the stuff that's actually happening today should give you a hint of, you know, maybe what's going to be there tomorrow. So I kind of see it like what you said in the beginning, get your name because it's going to be easy to accept payments. Right. And then maybe like to get traffic to your website, maybe something like for like blog or something like that then look towards DeFi, perhaps maybe something around there and then cryptocurrency and then way far away what I was talking about. Okay. Got it. All right, Brad, thanks so much. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy. So that's it for today. All right. So I hope that helped a little bit uh, for a Q of the day. Now, if you want to sign up and take a look at uh, different domains for unstoppable domains, there is a link in the description of every one of my videos is going to look like this. And this will take you directly to the unstoppable domain site. Uh, a lot of good things out there. I've already bought two. I think I have three now. And uh, we'll see what all works out. Maybe in a couple of years, I could be a millionaire, but I don't think anybody's going to want to buy Dan likes crypto or Dan likes dot crypto or Dan teaches dot crypto. Maybe not, but who knows? All right. So I want to say thanks again for watching all the way through. Really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not for sure because YouTube handles all of that, just like the ads you may have seen on this video. So if you saw a scam ad in the beginning, middle, or even after this, uh, go and talk to YouTube. They'd love to hear from you. So that's it for today. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.